All right, hey guys, this is um, Kevin, Bar Race AMV. Uh, I've been asked lately about to make a tutorial for some basic After Effects and some 3D, so I'm going to show you it today. Okay, so first we go in After Effects. Doesn't matter what version you have; they're pretty much all the same. I don't really see any exclusiveness in each of them. Just maybe a few new features like rotoscoping from like CS4 to CS5. So. You shouldn't have a problem, even if it's not CS6. So I'll go and make a new project. Uh, okay, we have a new project now, but there's no composition. So what we want to do is just go to composition at the top, create a new composition. You can use whatever you want. For this one, I'll just use 720p, so width 1280 by 720. Frame rate, I'll just choose 23.976. Resolution doesn't matter. We can change that inside the composition itself. Uh, let's click OK, and we have our first composition. Now you can consider a composition as like a folder, I guess. And you can create more and more, and you can use these folders or compositions to like batch your effects and clips together. So what I'm going to do is just import two files that we can use to show you how to use the 3D. Now, we have this picture of a Sun I Am Disappoint and KFC Loverman. Alright, so what I'm going to do is show you the difference between normal camera and no object camera. So what I'm going to do down here in the timeline is right click, go to new, camera. Now, some I've seen a lot of tutorials where people name their cameras to keep track of things, but I, I usually do things in a chronological order and I cut um, pieces of the camera that I don't use. So they're always on top of whatever clips they are that they use with. So I'm not really going to concern myself with that today. You can just use 50 milliliter millimeters if you want. Doesn't really matter. I'll click OK. Camera and lights do not affect 2D layers. Select a layer and choose 3D layer from the menu. And I'll show you guys how to do that after. So here we have our camera layer on our timeline. But we don't have any 3D layers yet. So what I'm going to do is going to take. I'm going to drag this picture before they'll be imported into the timeline. Okay. Now this is in 2D mode right now. There are, you can see here, three buttons. This the cube here or it represents the 3D layer and to turn on the switch for 3D, it'll just activate the the Z axis on it. So I just click here and now there will be a cube in there. And now we can move you can see I can if I put my mouse over the picture, I can move it backwards and forward in 3D space. And of course, X and Y. Now I'll just go back to where it was. And since this has no perspective yet, it's just a simple 2D looking picture still. I'm going to add the other one so I can move that one in 3D space. Let's put that one in. Activate the 3D mechanism and then move it over to the side a little bit. My bad, sorry. Over to the side, maybe forward, forward a little bit. That should work. All right. So now we have one in front and one behind. But you could just say this is a picture that is bigger than the other one, but it's not because they are indeed different in the positions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand by clicking down the down arrow on the camera. You can see the transform options for it. Uh, I'll, these stopwatches indicate key framings. So if you, if you want to create an uh, animation, just click one of these, it will highlight and you get your first keyframe. And no, instead of that right now, I'm going to show you how to use the camera tools up here. So up here we have the camera, unified camera tool. That's for just all sorts of just viewing applications. Now I'm just clicking and holding to do this, by the way. You can view different perspectives of it. But I don't really use the unified camera tool. I'll use, usually, I'll click C to, change, to cycle through them. So next we have Orbit Camera Tool, which is pretty hard to use too. It's um, for rotation on the Z axis. 
I click C again, it's for X and Y. This is a very useful one, as well as the next one, which I'm going to show you. This one, you can go left, or right to left, and left to right, up and down. Now, as you can see, this is one of the things I want to show you. Now, keep in mind that this is just camera, and not camera with no object. So, if I move it to the right, you can see that the perspective a bit, the picture, the picture in front kind of overlaps the picture from behind. I'm not sure what to call this actual effect, but I know it happens in real life or whatever. And this can be quite problematic sometimes, especially when you're editing, because you don't want the layer to be in a particular place and to keep moving. You want it to just be kind of a flat 3D, I'm not sure, but like you want it to be chained down. Anyways, I'm going to show you a quick keyframe. So, since we are changing the position of this, I'm going to click position. We have made ourselves a keyframe. I'm going to move forward. Let's see, I'm just expanding the timeline. Move forward a few seconds, or maybe just one second even. And I will just move the camera again. And it's created a new keyframe, you can see. Now the, these diamond keyframes are linear keyframes, so they'll move from one keyframe to the other at a constant speed. I won't explain the specifics today, but you can actually change the speed in which the keyframes go at. So there'll be graphs and stuff, and y you'll get it. It'll be easing and ease out. I can show you later. So you can just see how it moves like that. Now I'll show you how to use camera with no object. So I'll just delete this camera here. These, these objects and layers are still 3D in space, so we should be fine. I'll create a camera again, doesn't matter what settings. But this time I'll also create new null object. Basically a null object is just a layer. It's got absolutely nothing in it except for transformation controls, which you can't even see as a visible object in After Effects. So what I'll do is you'll see this little swirly belly button looking icon here. It's on every layer. It's called a pick whip. And you can use this to parent from any layer to a child. So basically, if one layer is a child, you can parent it to another one so that it will take on its attributes. So I'll take this camera here and I'll just take a pick whip, hold it, and drag to the null object. And now you can see on the side here, it'll say no one. So that means now the null one is its parent. This time, instead of keyframing from the camera itself, I'm going to keyframe from the null object, which is the parent. And as before, as I said, it, it takes attributes from it. We can just keyframe here. I'll just keyframe position. But now I notice a difference. If I move up or down, left to right, the perspective changes only slightly, not as much. It's very linear, I would say. It's it's more fluid. This is pretty useful for when you're editing clippage and you don't want it to move as much. The other camera moves in perspective a lot lately. And this is the first part of the camera tutorial and the next part I will show you guys soon.